Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Before we take up the daily quiz for today, let me wish everyone a very happy Holi. May the festival of colors add more vibrancy to your preparation for the upcoming prelims. So with this, let's get started with the daily quiz for today. The first question, which of the following statements are correct? The unique land parcel identification number is a scheme that plans to issue a 14 digit identification number to every plot of land in the country it is being implemented by the unique identification authority of india it's a part of the digital india land records modernization program that began in 2008 it is aimed at making land acquisition easier for public projects besides ending land fraud and dubious land ownership amongst the given statements the second statement is incorrect so option d is the right answer see the unique land parcel identification number scheme is being implemented by the department of land resources of the ministry of rural development the ul pin project is in news because we have a related article in today's the hindu newspaper see the central government has already launched the ul pin project across 10 states and this project will be rolled out across the country by 2022 under this project the department of land resources of the ministry of rural development is taking forward the digital india land records modernization program which was started back in 2008 under this initiative every plot of land in the country is being allotted a unique id a unique 14 digit id quite similar to your aadhar number this unique id will help us uniquely identify each plot of land and it will also help in digitizing land records and replace the outdated records under this project each plot of land will be uniquely identified through its longitude and latitude based on geospatial data and accurate maps and surveys once the identification is done each plot of land will be given a unique id and the land records will be digitized following this these records will be integrated with revenue records with aadhar numbers and this will ensure seamless integration of all land related data this project will serve a number of objectives including the creation of a land bank that will help in land acquisition especially for public projects and it will also help the citizens by eliminating land fraud and dubious ownership of land and help the government authorities at the center state and local level to improve land revenue and land management and as well as to use the database in several other sectors such as agriculture disaster management etc now let's look at the second question what is the key demand of the tripura land movement inclusion of tripura's tribal areas under the sixth schedule end to cross border migration from myanmar separate state in india for the indigenous tripuri people in tribal areas compensation to the victims of insurgency in tripura the correct answer is option c see the tribal areas of tripura already enjoy autonomy under the sixth schedule and the tripura tribal areas autonomous district council has already been set up so this makes the first statement incorrect the second statement is irrelevant because tripura doesn't share any borders with myanmar but it shares a border with bangladesh and yes previously there had been a problem of cross border illegal migration from bangladesh but under the given question the second statement becomes irrelevant then the tripura land movement is not related to compensation to the victims of insurgency and insurgency in the state ended several years ago but however the indigenous tripuri people who are already a part of this autonomous district council under the sixth schedule they have raised a demand for a separate state within india for the native indigenous tribes of tripura and its tribal areas there is also a demand for the so called greater tripura land which unites all the areas inhabited by the tripuri tribes which are found not just in the tripura state but also in assam mizoram and bangladesh so the tripura land movement is related to the demand for a separate state within india by the native indigenous tribes of tripura this question has been asked because according to this article in the hindu the ipft or the indigenous peoples front of tripura which was raising the demand for tripura land has put its agenda on the back burner as the autonomous district council is headed for elections now let's look at the third question amongst the below given states 
which state has relatively suffered the maximum impact of tropical cyclones in the Bay of Bengal? Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh or Odisha? The correct answer is option D, Odisha. See, the tropical cyclones that form in the Bay of Bengal, they have a disastrous impact on the entire east coast of India. Almost every state is affected, including Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and as well as the Union Territory of Puducherry. But however, if you evaluate the tropical cyclones of the last two decades, for the extent of damage they have caused on the east coast of India with regard to loss of life and property, relatively it is the state of Odisha which has suffered the maximum. This fact is brought out by this article in the Hindu, according to which the last eight high intensity cyclones that have hit the state have led to the death of around 160 people, including property damage valued at around 32,000 crore rupees. Since the super cyclone of 1999, Odisha has been hit by several high intensity cyclones, including Cyclone Filene, Cyclone Hudud, Titli, Bulbul, Fani, Umfan, etc. These cyclones have caused immense damage and destruction to both life and property and the central disaster management assistance that has been provided to Odisha is simply insufficient to deal with the losses that have been caused. So amongst all the states along the east coast of India, Odisha happens to bear the maximum impact of the tropical cyclones that form in the Bay of Bengal. Now let's look at the fourth question. Which of the following statements are correct? Pong Dam Lake Wildlife Sanctuary is located in Uttarakhand. The dam has been built across the BS River and is also called the Maharana Pratap Sagar. It has been designated as a wetland of national importance and declared a Ramsar site under the Ramsar Convention. Amongst the given statements, the first statement is incorrect. So option D is the right answer. Because see, the Pong Dam Lake Wildlife Sanctuary is located in Himachal Pradesh, not Uttarakhand. This question has been asked because according to this article in the Hindu, 27 migratory birds have been found dead at the Pong Dam Lake Wildlife Sanctuary in Himachal Pradesh. These deaths of migratory birds could have occurred due to avian influenza, either because of the H5N1 strain or because of the H5N8 strain. Now let's look at the fifth question. Jama Islamia is a terrorist outfit operating out of which country? The correct answer is option C. Indonesia. See, according to this article in the Hindu, Indonesia has also been a victim of terrorism ever since an Al-Qaeda affiliated terrorist outfit carried out attacks at Bali, a popular tourist destination back in 2002. Off late, radicalism and extremism has again started increasing in Indonesia and a terrorist outfit known as Jama Islamia has been carrying out several terror attacks in the country. According to this article, a church has been targeted by this terror outfit and this highlights the threat posed by this outfit in the region. Now let's look at a question from the 2017 prelims paper. If you want to see gharials in their natural habitat, which one of the following is the best places to visit? Bitterkanika mangroves, Chambal river, Pulikat lake, Depor Beel. The correct answer is option B, the Chambal river. See in India, we can come across three types of crocodilians the gharials, the mugger and the saltwater crocodiles. The gharial is listed as critically endangered by the IUCN and they can be found only in freshwater habitats. So you can rule out option A and C because Bitterkanika and Pulikat Lake, they are saltwater habitats. The gharials can be found naturally in the Chambal River and in fact, we even have the National Chambal Gharial Wildlife Sanctuary that has been set up at the tri-junction of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. In this critical habitat, you can even find the red crown turtle which is critically endangered and the Gangetic River Dolphin which is listed as endangered by the IUCN. Now coming to the fact of the day, let's talk about Lord Mountbatten as he finds a mention in this article of the Hindu newspaper. See, Lord Louis Mountbatten who can be seen in this image over here was appointed as the Viceroy of India in 1947 to basically oversee the partition of British India into the dominions of India and Pakistan. Later, after India-Pakistan became independent, he was even appointed as the first Governor General of India and he served until June 1948. See, by late 1940s, Britain had more or less decided to grant independence to India 
and the British government wanted someone on the ground in India who could act decisively and put in place the transition process so that Britain could exit the subcontinent as soon as possible. Because following the Second World War, Britain was not just exhausted with conflicts, but it was also finding it difficult to deal with the decolonization movements that had taken root around the world in British colonies. Especially in the Indian subcontinent, the Indian freedom struggle had gained momentum and it had become very clear to the British that they could no longer hold on to their prized asset that was India. So to put in place the transition process, Lord Mountbatten was given informal powers and this enabled him to act more decisively and quickly in taking decisions compared to the previous viceroys. He had the advantage of having the firm support of the British government along with the advantage of the firm decision of Britain to grant independence to India at the earliest. So his task was basically to explore the different options of granting independence to India and arranging for the transfer of power and also to look into the question of India's partition which was a core demand for the Muslim League led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah. So while looking into the possibility of partitioning India on religious lines, Lord Mountbatten also had the task to keep the country as united as possible. Prior to his appointment, the proposal of the cabinet mission had fallen apart and the Muslim League was clearly insisting on the communal partition of India, according to which a demand for a separate sovereign state for the Muslims was made by the Muslim League. This demand for a separate Muslim state had been nurtured by the British themselves as a part of their divide and rule policy and they were even known to nurture several Hindu extremists as well who were seeking to push India towards a Hindu state. In between, the moderate forces of the Indian National Congress were looking to keep the country united and they were strictly opposing the communal partition of the country. So Lord Mountbatten, he tried to please both the sides but eventually the partition of Indian communal lines became inevitable. Then in June 1947, he proposed the Mountbatten plan, which basically provided for the partition of India with dominion status to both India and Pakistan. And the princely states were given the option of either joining the Indian dominion or the Pakistani dominion, or even the option of remaining independent. Since the Mountbatten plan was the most acceptable solution, all the stakeholders eventually consented to it. Then following this, the British Parliament ratified the Mountbatten plan as the Indian Independence Act of 1947. Then to enable the partition of India, that is the Punjab and the Bengal province, the Sir Ratcliffe Committee was set up and Lord Mountbatten had the responsibility to oversee the functioning of this boundary committee, which drew up the boundaries between India and West Pakistan and India and East Pakistan. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.